Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Gold Lotus Popper channel. Today we're going to be doing a tier list for the Popper format. Uh, I took the top 50 or so decks from the MTG Decks website. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of rank them where I feel as though they are in the format right now. Uh, this is going to be post Commander Masters format. So this is going to be including all of the decks that are going to be getting a few upgrades maybe from the downshifts and rarities so we're going to jump right on in um go over the tier list so s being basically your meta defining decks decks you're going to see at the tops of tournaments and decks that are going to be constantly being focused on sideboarding against uh, then you have like your a ranks which are going to be like obviously tournament contenders decks that people are going to be bringing to all the tournaments but not necessarily going to be winning all the time and then we have your b rank decks which are going to be kind of like your 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 middle of the road decks that are uh definitely viable decks can pop up and win tournaments here and there but aren't going to be like the sole focus of uh people sideboarding strategies and stuff then you have like your c tier decks which are going to be like decks that were like popular ones but have kind of fallen off from the tops and uh, just need a little bit of help to maybe bump back up to B and A. And then you have like your D tier, which is going to be like your, I don't know, counter table tier, which is going to be decks that you brew together, but never really have a viable chance at winning tournaments. Um, decks that are just kind of put together loosely with a combo or just an idea, uh, but they're never going to end up being top tier decks that are going to be consistently winning tournaments so we'll go ahead and jump right on in um we will go ahead and start with affinity so right now grixis affinity is the popular choice for affinity it is absolutely still a viable deck even with the multiple bands from when we got a few bands a couple band lists ago and then they did another round and it just seems like no matter what they do people that are playing affinity are, are so resilient they're going to find a way to absolutely make the deck work and i believe at this last popper get in there was three grixis affinities in the top eight that's just absolutely absurd so obviously it's a s tier still a very popular contender the deck absolutely just runs through a lot of decks when it comes to value so i just feel like it's gonna be s tier no matter what <clears throat> next up we got altertron uh let's see altertron it did win the popper Gen tournament of uh not this past one but i believe the one before that um i've seen the deck in action it's it's very very powerful if it can get going but i feel as though People just have too much sideboard hate against it right now. There's a lot of options for getting rid of it. Ah, man. I feel like I should put it in A. Um, it is, it's 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 still a very popular deck. I think it needs a really good pilot, though. Um, there are a lot of sideboard options against it, unfortunately. Um, we'll put it in... We'll put it in B tier right now. I think it's it definitely can win tournaments in the right atmosphere with the right pilot. But in terms of consistency, I just don't see it being a deck that's going to consistently win big tournaments or even just tournaments in general. Uh, might get a lot of flack for that, but I mean, I, I, I guess. Uh, next up is Boris Boley. This deck... Um, uh, it's slightly different than Boros Synthesizer. This is primarily see focusing more on creature beatdown and token generations. I'm going to put it in C tier. I think uh, it's Big Brother Boros Synthesizer is just strictly a better deck. Nothing against Boros Bully. I just feel as though like the deck is going to be a little bit slower because it doesn't have the uh, generation of um, value from the artifacts and stuff so I just think it's going to be more of a go wide strategy and try and beat down uh, we get we are getting quite a few board wipes from commander masters and the downshifts so I just think it's not in a good position right now Boros synthesizer it's going to be a tier 
Uh, reason why I didn't put it in C tier or S tier, I'm sorry, is because before this last popper get in, it didn't have a lot of big tournament landings and placements. This last tournament, um, it did really well. A lot of people have been strategizing with it and also fi following Andre Mangucci. Uh, he's really put that deck back up on the map. There was, I think, three top eight finishes for the Boros Synthesizer version, which plays a lot more artifact base. And I just think it's a popular choice right now because of that. It's inexpensive. It's very efficient. Um, but I feel as though it might slowly fall back out of place after it's given a little bit of time. Uh, it doesn't seem like it got anything from Commander Masters. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, what's next up is Call Gates. So, this is going to be your uh, your variants, whatever color you're going to run. Most popular is obviously blue-white, but I've seen Esper Control Call Gates. I've seen um, Naya Call Gates. Uh, but this one's going to be just your, your generic blue-white Call Gates. Uh... I feel as though it's in a really good position right now. It's 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 kind of like a mid-range control version of the Call Gates. Um, I'm gonna put it. Uh, we'll put it in A for now. I might bump it down. We'll see. It's it's a very good deck. Don't get me wrong. Um, it does everything very well. Um, it generates a lot of value. It it has multiple ways of controlling the board. Uh, it has multiple ways of pumping big threats. It's just, um, I just don't think it's fa as fast as some of the f other decks in the format right now that want you to play. The decks or the the decks that are doing really well are all about speed and efficiency, and Callgates are just a, just a step behind them in terms of speed, but it makes up for other ways with like uh, board presence controlling and stuff. So we'll keep it in A for now. Uh, next up is Cycling Storm. Oh God. Uh, so, Cycling Storm is going to be, we'll put him in C for now. I really want to put him in D. Um, the deck is just simply not that great. I mean, it's cool, and it's expensive, and it's flashy when it gets going. It's just, it for a Popper deck, it's expensive. And it with Popper being a format that's supposed to be accessible to everybody, the deck, if it's going to be that expensive, it'd pre be pretty darn good. And really, it's just not that great. Uh, next up is Walls Combo. Mm, easy B tier. Uh, Walls Combo is one of those decks that can pop up at a tournament, do excessively well, could do terrible. Just depends on its matchups, the pilot, um, how they've built the deck, and uh, just overall like luck of the draw for the day. Uh, I've played the deck in the past to a very successful tournament finish. Uh, I've played in the past to a very poor finish. Like I said, it's just one of those decks that when you have good matchups, you have good days. And when you have bad matchups, it's going to be a rough day. Uh, like I said, it also takes a great pilot because it is one of those decks that you have to really know how to weave in and out of the combo and be able to make sacrifices to stay alive while still trying to push for the combo. But it's definitely a good deck. You could definitely finish well in a tournament with it if you know how to pilot it well. So next up is uh, Demir Fairies. Demir Fairies is like, oddly enough, even though it has access to black, I feel like it's a step behind uh, Mono Blue Fairies. Um, I think the Mono Blue Tempo... It's just consistent because of the mana base. I feel like adding black and kind of slows it down. Uh, we will go. I think we're going to see tier. I just. I want to put. In, I want to put it in B tier, but I just feel like. In it, maybe we'll bump it up to B tier. I don't know. We'll see where everything else places. C tier seems like a good spot. Like it, it could finish well. I've seen it finish well, but I've never seen a whole lot of tournament wins especially not consistent wins but that's not to say that it's not good um in the right hands it's definitely gonna be good uh but for now we'll put in c tier uh next up is demir terror easy a uh demir terror is still a very viable deck it's on the little pricier side but that's because of like four or like four cards and you have to have a play set of each um the deck is very powerful it's very fast it's got enough controlling aspects that it can control the game, slow it down to a point where 
you get your big threats out and you're going to beat it. Plus, they picked up a new uh, card from the new set. Uh, we'll see how players kind of move that deck around, whether they replace the Gurmag Anglers with the new Serpent. And uh, I see, I could see them taking out black. Then it would just be mono blue serpents. But then again, um, black adds a lot of accessibility to the deck between like unexpected fangs and the removal spell packages. It's just uh, black adds that little bit of versatility that it needs to kind of get rid of some of the bigger other threats in the format. So we'll put an A because it's definitely deserving of A. Next up is elves. Oh, God. Elves. Uh, D tier. I. In a format where there's not a lot of board wipes, the few board wipes we do have seem to generally be enough to get rid of them. I mean, the deck's very fragile. It's a glass cannon. You get one good board wipe in, and they're just they're just pretty much wasted. Um, I've literally maybe seen a dozen elf decks in my lifetime, and I played a lot of popper tournaments. Uh, the deck is just very fragile. That's why a lot of players don't play it. It's also kind of expensive for being such a fragile deck. It's the same as Cycle Storm. Um, next up is Flickertron. Uh, Flickertron, we'll put in B tier now. It's a good deck. Don't get me wrong. Um, it it's probably I want to say it's I want to say it's the better version of between Altertron and Flickertron. I just think Flickertron has more versatility when it comes to the toolboxing to get out of such certain situations it doesn't entirely rely on the combo yes the deck does win off of comboing with like uh ghostly flicker and um stonehorn dignitary and demonic wall and but there are other ways you can win with that deck in terms of like flickering back burn spells kill spells stuff like that but i just like it a little bit better because it doesn't have that vulnerability as Aldertron does where if they remove your or exile your artifacts you're just completely in like trouble because you don't have a backup plan so um next one is looks like Mogwarts yeah Goblin Combo Mogwarts oh boy I'm gonna put in D tier it's another one of those fragile combos that just it's just not it's not good enough to be consistently in the top tiers uh, but it's definitely a good deck and can surprise some people. It might steal a few tournaments, like, just in a small tournament, but it's not going to show up to a big tournament and get a lot of wins. Uh, next up is Pure Goblin. So this is like the Mono Red Aggro, also D tier. I just think there's better options for Mono Red decks. If Goblins are your thing, that's cool. Like, play them. I'm not telling you not to, but I'm just telling you that if you're playing Mono Red, there's probably multiple multiple options that are better and we'll get to those in a second next up is uh golgari control it's getting more popular here recently um we'll put it in b tier for now uh the deck is just i don't know it's it's golgari control um it's got a lot more popular here recently but uh i don't know it's uh, one of those decks that you got to know how to pilot, and I feel as though it's going to take a good tournament placements against matches to do very well. But it is good enough to win tournaments because I've seen it win tournaments. So, next up is uh, Midnight Guard or Gond Compo. It's uh, Presence of Gond plus Midnight Guard creates infinite elf warriors. Um, some variations play red for uh, first day of class or impact tremors. Lop just play green white. It's kind of like a. It's pretty much just a green white mid range control combo deck. Um, I think it's better than some of these down here in D tier. So we're gonna put in C tier. Uh, it's it's hard because all the combo pieces are so high in CMC. They're like three threes yeah you gotta have three three cmc cards that have the combo so i just i think it's kind of a heavy price for playing the combo but it's still better than some of those down d tier next up is gruel aggro uh i'm gonna put in d tier i think there's way better options i think gruel combo is basically mono green uh stompy that wants to play lightning bolts that's pretty much it 
Uh, there's a few other cards like um, uh, uh, Burning Tree Emissary. And that's about it. I feel as though you're much better off just playing Mono Green Stompy or Mono Red. Uh, next up is Gruel Cascade. Gruel Cascade is... Boy. Uh, boy. I feel like Jun, Ca Jun Cascade or like Jun Wildfire is much, much better. So we'll put it in D tier. I think I think it's just doo-doo. I don't think it's that great. Um, I think, like I said, your colors are off. I just, just think you have better options. Um, next up is Gruel Ponza. Uh, right now in the meta, if we're talking right now in the meta, I'm going to put Gruel Ponza in... Pff, boy, we'll put it in A tier for now. I might bump it to B. We'll see. Uh, it's just right now a lot of decks are really dependent on their lands. They're starting to branch out into multicolored decks. And you start hitting their multicolored lands that are already coming in tapped, well, you're really going to hurt them. They're going to really slow down. It's becoming a lot more popular. Um, it's a little bit on the pricier side. But it's not that pricey compared to some other decks. So I, I still think it could do very, very well. Especially in decks that rely heavily on their lands. Like uh, the Tron decks or the uh, Affinities. Or decks that run the Indestructible Artifact lands. Um, they have ways of getting rid of that kind of stuff. So, And next up we have Mono White Weenies. So like basically like poopier boggles. Um, you know what? Is as, as as much as this deck gets joked about and you know dunked on for like a twenty dollar popper deck, it actually slaps pretty good. Like it can catch a lot of people off guard. It's got access to a lot of really good sideboard cards in white. Um, it is kind of fragile. I mean, I'm gonna put it in B tier. I think it's better than some of these down here. Uh, it's definitely better than some of these uh, jankier combo decks. It's definitely better than these decks down here. I think it could do very well in a tournament, given the right matchups. It's basically boggles, but all white, and it doesn't have the hex proof. But you have access to other things, so I think it's okay at beer tier. Then we have uh, Infect Storm. Mm, Infect Storm. Let's see, uh, C tier. I think it's a janky combo deck. I think um, if you're going to play Infect, you should just be playing like the strictly, what's the new blue-black control Infect version that some people are playing. I guess it's blue-black poison storm, I guess is one more like it. Or you have your classic blue-green Infect decks, which we're coming up next on. I just think there's better options. Uh, next is Infect. Uh, C tier still, I think. I think the deck's fallen off a lot. Um, it did get uh, in Biggin in, was it Infinity? But I don't think it's enough to push it up into a competitive format right now. It's just too slow, too much removal. It's just, it's not fast enough where it, w it previously was at one time. Uh, if they want to give us um, ac access to Cadaxian Pro back, then it might bump up because then we'll be able to see what the opponent has and be able to kind of... Uh, adjust our game plans whether we're going to be a little bit more aggressive or hold back until we get a protection spell but in terms of right now i just think it's still going to be c tier uh next up we have uh initiative decks so uh mainly boros initiative uh i think it's c tier i think it's janky it's got its days um I guess you could do Boros or Gruel because you have access to uh, Avenging, uh, Avenging whatever. I can't remember the name of that card. Uh, but you also have Goliath Paladin, so you have two of those. I think Initiative is a strong thing. Don't get me wrong. Initiative is very powerful. Obviously, it's banned in multiple formats, but in Pauper, I think it's just a little too slow in a format that is driven by speed. And that deck just takes too much time to set up. So, for that reason, we're going to give it a uh, C tier. Next up is Is It Delver? I think Is It Delver is just basically like blue, red fairies, but worse. 
Um, I think it lacks efficiency. I think it's just like basically blue red delvers like the old is it scred but just without scred um, it can run scred uh, I've seen multiple formats where it does run that um, but that's kind of it's kind of its own thing like this isn't scred this is just basically delver combo play a lot of instants and sorceries chain together and burn them out so for that it's gonna go D tier I just don't think it's that viable um, next up is, is it fairies or is it scred, uh, scred red? Uh, I think it's, I think it's vile enough to be B. Um, in a world full of mono blue fairies and demir fairies, I think, is it scred is still a popular choice. I think scred's an immensely powerful spell. The access to lightning bolt still, the access to all the powerful cantrips in blue, um, I just think it's a good option for a rogue deck if you're going to play something rogue. Um, next up is is it Serpentine? So this is a this is a pretty wanky deck. It's just basically play and play as many is it spells as you can, cantrips, and kind of control the board. Then you dump off a Serpentine curve and you make a big dude and hope to beat face, and then it gets destroyed by something. As simple as cast down. So, yeah, I ju it's just too janky for my likes. Uh, Jeskai Ephemerate, solid B tier. Um, you know what? No, I think it's C tier. Uh, I think I was thinking of something else. Uh, no, it's B tier. It's definitely B tier. I've seen some good finishes with it. Um, the deck's very good, it's very versatile. Um, Jeskai always has, has really good cantrips. Um, Ephemerate is stupidly powerful in this format, and I think right now it's just um, in a weird spot where it's it's fast enough but not fast enough. I think it's you got to have consistently the correct draws. Uh, next up, let's see, um, Jun Metalcraft. So <laughs> I think I'm probably gonna catch a lot of flack for this. Um. I think Jun Metalcraft is C tier. Don't get me wrong, it's a good deck. It's got powerful cards. I just think it needs to be piloted by the right person with the right deck build in the right format, like the right atmosphere, I'm sorry, have the right matchups. I think there's better Metalcraft deck builds. Jun's got access to like one black card that's good that actually has Metalcraft. And it's kind of a steep card to pay. Uh, I I love the deck. It's cool. I've seen some really cool variations on it. I just don't think it's a, a deck that somebody could pick up and start playing immediately and do excessively well with. Uh, not to say it's never going to become popular. I just think it's one of those rogue decks that somebody, you know, builds and then kind of crafts into a good deck. I don't know. Uh... Next up, Mono Black Control, the grandfather of the format. This deck has been around since the induction of this format. Uh, solid B tier, 100%. The deck I've seen do very well. Um, it can do very well. I think, I think unfortunately for this deck, it's just it's stale. I think people have come to learn how to play around it, against it. It has good days, it has bad days. I think it's just one of those decks that, you know, if... You want to pick up Pauper. You don't know what to play, but you want you kind of you want to have a chance at doing well. Mono Black's probably going to be the deck you're going to pick up. Uh, Mono Blue Fairies S tier, easy. Uh, the deck is stupid. Like it fell off for a while. Then people were like, "Oh yeah, this deck exists," and then now it's just like they changed the deck list. Is what happened. So it used to be like a Delver in there and some like. Like a few, like a few copies of a bunch of cards. Now they're just like, nah, we're just stacking the fairies, stacking the ninjas, four, 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 four of these spells, and everything else is just tempo. And guess what? It is good. I think there's one copy of Mono Blue Fairies in the top eight at Popper Genin, and let me tell you what, the deck is annoying to play against. It is fast. It is aggressive. It has good tempo speed. It has answers for everything. 
I think it's just a really, really good deck in the format right now. Some people might disagree, but I think it's an S-tier deck. Uh, Mono Blue Tempo, it's just Mono Blue Fairies with less fairies and more uh, more counter spells and stuff. I think it's S-tier. I, I think they lose a lot from not running as many fairies. Obviously, Spell Starter Sprite is a broken card. I mean, it's played in multiple formats across Magic. Um, the card with mono or uh, spell star sprite was in the world champion deck uh, back in the early 2000s, I believe. It's just the deck has so much good stuff going on for it. If you take away fairies, you take away a lot from it. Next up is a mono green stompy. Uh, B tier deck. I think it's still a very, very viable rogue deck. I don't think it's a consistent top contender, but I think it's one of those decks that can show up and do very well. I've seen it win quite a few challenges online. Um, I think it's good enough you could bring to a local tournament and do very well with. Next up, Mono Red Burn. This is the Burn variant that does not run as many artifacts or creatures. This is A tier. I think even though it makes up the highest percentage of decks on the MTG deck website, I don't think it's nearly as good as the other mono red deck. Um, I think the creature based one's a little bit better and more aggressive. It can come out swinging a lot faster. And like I said multiple times, in a format that is determined by speed and efficiency, this deck is good but not as efficient as the other deck mono red kiln fiend b tier this deck is fast if you get a creature out turn two and you have enough fuel in your hand you can win by turn three i've seen it win technically turn two if you play the simian spirit guide um but most decks don't run that version uh, i know when i built it i did but with uh, mutagenic growth and everything and uh, lava darts and blah 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 you can actually kill them on turn two uh does it happen no but turn threes and fours it's very viable um for a lot of decks that are unsuspecting or don't have the proper removal you can find yourself dead very fast and it's not that terribly hard to pilot <clears throat> next up mono red kadotha s tier this is the other red deck I was talking about. This deck is very good because of two things. One, speed. You have to be fast in this format to do well. With a format that does not have a ton of board wipes um, at instant speed, this deck can do up to 11 damage by turn two if you're playing the Simeon Spirit Guide version. And then it's... it's um, if, uh, efficiency is great because of all the artifacts and the call out the rebirths allow you to rebuild very quickly if they do manage to board wipe you and uh bushwhacker just puts the pressure on once you get creatures on board i it's one of those decks that you're constantly thinking how am i gonna have to how am i gonna combat this deck when i go against it I've known the guys that have literally brought 10 cards in their sideboard just to like battle against Mono Red because it just absolutely obliterates them. So for that, it's 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 definitely gonna be a S tier choice for me. Alright, next up is is this uh let's see here. Mono oh this is mono white heroic. I don't know what I did earlier. Uh, what was the deck I looked at earlier then? I don't know. This is Mono White Heroic. Uh, oh, that was Boggles earlier. I'm sorry. So, Mono White Boggles are going to be A tier. Boros Heroic is B tier. So, we'll just... I already talked about Mono White Heroic earlier. Boggles. Boggles is the big brother to Mono White Heroic. Much better. Fat, or it's more aggressive. Harder to get rid of. Huge pain in the neck. Um, dudes literally are like, oh god, I'm playing Boggles, what am I going to do? Like, they're literally, their anxiety shoots through the roof because they don't know what they're going to do against Boggles. It's one of those decks that you can have a really good day, you can have a really bad day. If you're not sure what you want to play against or you don't know the meta, just bring Boggles. It's going to steal some wins. You're going to probably 
placed in the top four, it's a good time. Just bring them. So for that, it's easy A tier. No questions asked. Uh, let's see. Monster Tron. So this is like the weird... Uh, weird cousin to the other two Trons. Monster Trons just basically it spams big creatures. I would almost call I would almost want to say this is Mono Green Tron. So, but there are variations that are like the Cascade Tron. So it's like the cast the green red Cascade creatures plus like the the colorless uh, Golem Cascade. I think it's the worst out of all the cast or the uh, Trons. Uh, but I still think it's viable enough that it's better than everything in D tier. So we're going to put it in C tier. All right, next up is Orzhov Ephemerate. I think Orzhov Ephemerate is going to be one of those decks that are always a viable threat, piloted by the right person. I think we put it in B tier. It has great days, it has bad days. The deck is good, it's efficient, it's not super fast but it's not super slow it's more of a mid-range deck ephemerate is a broken card it makes it protection aggression combo efficiency it's just it does it all next up or is pestilence i think it's in a weird spot it's got the board wise but it doesn't have the speed i put c tier um i think you're better off just doing mono black mono black control but you know some people like them board wipes and playing the slow roll so kudos to you Rakdos burn uh just play burn it's d tier yeah it's like i don't know it's like edgy burn or emo burn i don't know it's definitely not as good as burn though i think it's uh i think it's got a cool few cool cards but it's definitely not burn um next up Rakdos madness uh c tier it's cool it's it, it, it what it really wants to do the madness thing i get that it's cool but you're not going to be as efficient as the other decks um for those who love madness cool you got some cards in there uh fire was a fiery temper yeah it's like a lightning bolt that's cool just play lightning bolt next up rakdos metalcraft um you have like 30 other decks that are way better at abusing the metalcraft I don't know why you're trying to play black. Um, D tier. Uh, yeah, you just it's just not as efficient. Next up, Reanimator. Oh, boy. So I'm probably going to get a lot of feedback on this. I think Reanimator is B tier right now. It's been really crappy recently, but there's been three new cards that kind of popped up for this deck. Actually, there's more than that because if you're talking about the deck... Okay, so thing about reanimator is that the cards that really actually made this deck good were the cycle creatures from lord of the rings when you can cycle a creature get a land on turn one and then turn two, exhume it back to the field and you suddenly have a six five that can't be blocked except for by three or more creatures and snuff out suddenly can't kill it and you're stuck with like cast down as your only option you're in you are in bad shape bro like bad shape plus you got the 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 mono green ent guy um he's a five seven with reach oh fairy suddenly got worse and he uh can eat all the attacks from uh demir terror that's pretty cool um yeah so and we got another reanimator spell and we got some other goodies like um, Drown in Sorrow. So now we can, now as a backup plan, if we have to go to the uh, four CMC reanimator spell, we can at least Drown in Sorrow, uh, kill everything on the board we can, slow their game down until we can rebuild. I think it's B tier. I think there's going to be a lot more reanimator popping up after Commander Masters uh, drops and we start seeing a lot more people like build the deck in different ways. I think right now I have it built as Golgari, but I've seen everything from Jund to Mono Black to uh, Orzov for like late to dinner. But Reanimator in general, I think, is in the spot where it has the opportunity to start making some leaps and jumps into the upper tiers. So we're going to put in B for now. We'll see. Maybe I'll eat my words later on. Slivers, C tier, I think. They're better than elves as a tribal deck. Um, 
I think slivers are just, it's weird because all of their lords are in common. I don't know how that happened, but all the lords for the slivers are commons. So it's not terrible, but it's not good. Have I ever seen it win a tournament? No, but have I seen it in tournaments do kind of well? Yeah. I think it's better than a table or a kitchen table deck, but I don't think it's an actual competitor. So we'll put it in C to be nice for now. Uh, Soul Sisters. God, I love this deck. Too bad it sucks. Um, even with... Uh, I don't know. I'll put in C tier. I think it's still better than some of this trash down here in D. And it's cool as hell. I mean, like, I played Soul Sisters in uh, Modern for a long time. Did I do very well? Not always, but sometimes I do well. Uh, it doesn't translate to Popper, but whatever. Uh, next up, Teamer Threshold, D tier, trash. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being brutally honest. I'm sorry. I just don't like it. Uh, I don't think it has anything to offer that the other other variations of the colors in this deck has. Um, Threshold is such a weird. It's a weird mechanic. It doesn't offer a lot for it, the payoff is not good enough for what you have to put in to get Threshold, um, and all the abilities aren't that great. Uh, speaking of decks that are cool but not great, Tireless Tribe combo C tier. Um, I think it's like. Really weird, janky uh, mono red hot dogs or mono red kiln fiend. Uh, I just I wish it was better because it's cool. Like, hey, check out this this spam of cards to make my dudes big, and now suddenly he went from a big booty to big fist, and I'm gonna beat your face in. So, uh, C tier. Uh, next up is Tortex. So tortured existence. God, this deck is so cool. And uh, I watched it the one year that uh, Matches of Gathering actually held Pauper at a Pro Tour event. It did pretty well, and I watched it on live. And had I, w I wished it won, but it didn't. Um, I think it's still really good. And it, it actually picked up a few new cards in Commander Masters. So I might get some negative feedback about this, but I'm putting Tortex in B. I don't care what they say. I think it has an opportunity to make some moves up the charts. So, whatever. Next up, Turbo Fog. Turbo Fog. Uh, Turbo Fog. Boy, oh boy. Hmm. I think Turbo Fog is D tier. No. I think it's C tier. I don't think it's bad as some of this trash down here, but I don't think it's a tournament. Like, somebody would have to be really good at piloting this deck to be really good at it. And it's one of those decks that people don't generally know about. Like, they're just like, oh, yeah, Turbo Fog, that's where you just play those, like, I can't attack spells, and then how do you win? Yeah, very jankly. Um, yeah, C tier. Next up is, we're coming up to the end, Blue White X Familiar. So, basically, Azorius, when you splash a color, because there's multiple variations... Familiar's B tier. Uh, it's easy B tier. The deck's good. Don't get me wrong. I just think it's not... I think blue-white Callgate's better than blue-white Familiar's. I wish... I wish that blue-white Familiar's had a little bit more to offer. Considering there's only one Familiar in the deck, but it's still a huge kind of core to the deck of reducing the costs. I think it's a solid um, B tier for sure. And... Last deck, I believe, is Mono White Weenie. The deck that literally just won't go away. It's in every single format. It's about as bad as Burn. Mono White Weenie. Um, I think it's a decent deck. So we're going to finish out in B tier as well. I think the deck is very uh, middle of the road. I think it, it has those days where under the right matchups and circumstances, it could easily mop the floor. And there's decks where it's just like, gets crapped on all day i think it's uh i think it's one of those decks that you just can you can pick it up and play uh, i think it's the best mono white deck of the mono whites so better than heroic better than soul sister um i guess that's really all the other mono whites but so looking back on this chart i'm pretty happy with everything i think the s tiers deserve to be an s tier right now those are the decks you're going to literally see everybody playing a tiers are very powerful decks. You'll see a lot of people playing. Um, B tiers are going to be 
Uh, decks that are that, that can do well, won't always do well, but definitely can do well. C tiers look pretty good, and uh, D tiers are trash. So, uh, thanks for checking in. Um, I'll drop another video pretty soon, for some some live gameplay. Uh, other than that, uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you uh, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. Other than that, I'll see you around.